Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals. And in today's video, we are gonna talk about everything that has to do with portfolios. Well, maybe not everything, but most things that we find relevant with portfolios and showreels when you're applying for, let's say your first job probably. So we're gonna go through, we've written a bunch of notes down for mm -hmm. universal things, things that might only apply to a showreel and things that might only apply to sort of like a static presentation of a portfolio. So this is one of our most heavily requested topics, like actually talking about portfolios. And it's something that when we go around and talk to students, it's, it's something we, we just see so many like small little issues and stuff which can fairly easily be, um, be remedied just to make your portfolio so much easier. Mm -hmm. We aren't gonna be talking about here how to technically do it. Like we aren't gonna be talking about like uh, make this character and put light it like this and all that. It's gonna be more, how do you compose your portfolio? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, first of all, it's a very requested video, but it's also, <laughs> in terms of daily support, you know, the emails that we get, this is this is probably the things that, thing that people email us the most about. Yeah. Um, people contact us on Discord, they're like, hey, what about this thing in my reel? What should I do here? What yeah. about this thing? And so it's just something that we've been dealing with a lot over the past, I don't know, few months, year. Yeah. Um, and it's important, like yeah. we were just talking about now before uh, about like what is really a portfolio and it's essentially a commercial for yourself. Yeah. And it's not just something you kind of throw together in like in like a week or something. It's something you got to just properly work on. It is, I mean, portfolio slash showreel is the most important piece of equipment you're going to get or use when it comes to getting a, a job. Yeah. Like, oh, you have all the networking and you have all the kind of stuff, which is important. But it's, it isn't worth anything if you don't have a reel to back it up. No. I mean, yeah, if you can't really show off your skills, then what's the point? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I, I recommended a bunch of people who uh, to to the industry, but if you, but that that's because they have good reels. Mm. If you, it doesn't matter how good friends we are. If you, if your stuff isn't up to par, I mean, we can't, nobody can recommend you. Yeah, yeah. It's all about making a reel. So we're just going to be talking about that. Mm. So first thing first, this is uh, universal for everything you do yes uh show your best work first like so when it whatever is a portfolio or <laughs> whatever it is or real you want to wow people right from the start yes so the this and this is actually this is one of the things that people ask a lot about where, where should i put things in my reel well whatever you think is the best show that off in the beginning yeah. because you only have a limited amount of time to let's say impress the people that want to hire you yeah. And the the truth is that most of the time they won't even finish your reels yeah. or your portfolios. This is, and I know this is a this is a sad thing to hear for a lot of people. And people most of the time go, "Wait, what?" <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, even if you have a show reel that's like a minute, maybe they'll only watch thirty seconds of it. Yeah. Because most of the time that is enough to judge. Okay, what kind of stuff do you have have yeah. in here? Yeah, I can. If it's a really good reel, I will I'll watch it all the way to the end. But if it's if it's kind of like a shady reel, the quality isn't that good. I'll mm. I'll turn it off like fairly quickly because if you haven't impressed somebody in thirty seconds, the next thirty seconds are not going to be no. You're no. not going to be able to impress anyone there as well. But that's the thing. If you can keep someone's attention by showing your absolute best work in the beginning, you're like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. This, this this looks promising, and yeah. then you'll keep watching or keep looking through. So this is universal because this, like we said, this applies to show reels, your art station, whatever it might be. Mm. Uh, if you have an art station, you have a bunch of stuff there, and only show your best stuff. Yeah. Really, only show your best stuff. Really? <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm giving you minus points on that. Ah, damn it. Okay, so let's retract the last thing there. <laughs> Best work? Well, apparently not. That doesn't count anymore. Yeah. Uh, one thing I also want to talk about is keep your work consistent. Mm. This is something we've we've seen a bit as well, where you you have people who have you have awesome work in your reel. Let's say you have five awesome pieces, and then you have one piece which just isn't very good. Mm. I mean, just cut it out. There was an acid, mm. super cool, very yeah. detailed acid, and you can clearly see from this acid the person totally knew what they were doing in terms yeah. of modeling. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. The asset following that was just a very simple object. Yeah. And but there, there was no no context to why it was there. So it was just after seeing that, okay, clearly this person knows how to model and do everything. Yeah. It just seemed a little lackluster. Yeah. it's The way I like to think about it is that 
by showing by showing an awesome master, let's say it's a full and star star from Star Wars, it's like <laughs> crazy stuff. You just did a hundred push-ups. Yeah. Next asset, you show me one push-up. Clearly, you can do one push-up if you just did a hundred. Yeah. You don't have to show me that. There's because... no reason to show me a Coke can after <laughs> no, no, you exactly. show me a dark Star Destroyer. No, exactly. You've already shown you can model or rig or whatever it might be. Like Our background is in, in modeling, so that, that is just what we naturally gravitate towards. Yeah. But all this here, this is universal. Uh, but also, one of the more uh, cynical reasons I like to think you should keep your work consistent. I know there are schools where teachers will actually help out a bit too much, not just in terms of advice, but they might actually do assets for your for your portfolio. Mm. And if you have one, or like let's say you have two 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 things in your reel which is awesome, and then you have one one or two which are not great, the cynical part might might think that well maybe you got help with this. Why is this so much better? than the two others. This might not be the case at all. Mm. It might just be that they were just a bit older. Yeah. But it you just don't want to have you should that thought shouldn't really enter somebody's mind. So if you only have two two things in your reel and it's a minute long, fifty seconds long, that's a hell of a lot better than keeping like two minutes long with like a bunch more stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just keep quality over quantity here. Yeah. Yeah, it's I think that that's a really important one. Just that it's it's focused yeah that if you have pieces that you've made recently and the other stuff in your reel or your portfolio maybe it's a year or two old and you've clearly progressed since then then there's no reason to show the old stuff yeah because if it like if it doesn't display your current skill level then i wouldn't have it in there yeah i totally agree with that particularly when you have you have students who's maybe they've been doing 3d for two years now and now you have something which is one year old mm. i mean that's at the very beginning at that point you've been doing it for like a hundred percent longer like yeah. your skills have improved <laughs> tremendously in that year yeah. so uh, you can either either redo it and like really pimp it up uh, let's say the model is good but the textures aren't then you can just inc- you can just um, increase the quality of the textures but sometimes as well it's just so fundamentally broken <laughs> because you did it so early on yeah. that you just gotta you just gotta scrap it move on and that's fine it's really it's really better to have a one solid piece than to have like older stuff i was just trying to scroll past through an art station and not like find boobs but that's <laughs> literally impossible i think art station is a fantastic platform do well, we have Okay, I'm just, let's leave it here where there's, where there's like male boobs. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so like, moobs. <laughs> moobs. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, continue. Our station is awesome. Uh, yeah. this is, there's so much inspiration here. And um, it, if you work, work it's featured as well, there's a bunch of, you get, get a bunch of exposure. Mm, it's, I think Art Station has really become one of those things where if you want to present a portfolio, then this is just the go-to place. Yeah. Like you, if if anyone has sort of like followed us for a while, they've probably seen the articles we posted from Gavin Golden, where mm. he kind of destroys Wix. Yeah, he talks about it. It's called "Why I Hate Demo Reels," <laughs> yeah. and he's really angry in the in the article, and rightfully so. And it's interesting because we <laughs> talked about that in terms of so like the difference is here for let's say gaming versus VFX is that for VFX. If you're applying as a modeler or texture artist, whatever, you'll show a showreel mm. that has a turntable, it's video, and it'll show your model and whatever. But in gaming, like, like well, that's what we talked with, with Gavin about. It's like he doesn't really care. Mm. He just want give me an art station where I can see all your art. It's all in yeah. one place, and I can just flick through it. Uh, I don't understand why that's not the same for VFX, actually. Yeah, it's, it's so in film you need a showreel. Like that is just not really up for negotiation. There are some people who've been applying without a reel, but you you have a bigger chance with 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 a reel. Yeah. But logically, doesn't make sense. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense <laughs> because you're showing still images. Yeah. It's kind of like if you were to uh, be an illustrator, you wouldn't make a showreel with your with your stuff. Like no. that just wouldn't make sense. Put still images in video format. Yeah, exactly. Like maybe you can do it if you really want to, but mm. to like make some sexy commercial or whatnot. But but really, just keep that stuff simple. I think that was another thing mentioned briefly in the beginning. The whole like it's a mer- commercial for yourself. Mm. Uh, it's important to note that well, at least some some of the reels the reels that I've seen, it almost becomes a commercial for your product yeah. it's a commercial <laughs> for your model mm. like we were just ta- we were just looking at some bad examples of show reels before and this is one reel where show a model okay cool you've shown the model but then all of a sudden this video overlay pops up that gives me um the poly count of it and 
when it's rent where it's been rendered it was what, render what? engine it was rendered it's a modeling reel i don't care no um and then some bad things about the model as well that was yeah it was like hey don't worry about this kind of stuff this was done because of free you're selling yourself here yeah you wouldn't be selling a car and be like actually it's uh it's a bit old also it doesn't <laughs> oil doesn't work you're selling yourself you you gotta just be pushing at it yeah i think that's also why it's so important with all the whole the whole thing about your best work show your best work first and then keep it consistent yeah. Obviously, you can't expect that, like, the piece that you just finished, which is, like, probably the latest piece in your reel, or you're probably better than the one that comes mm. right before it and then b- before that. But it's, like, it's trying to keep that consistency. I think yeah. that's important. Yeah, um, for sure. Obviously, if there's, like, a year between every every portfolio piece, then the quality might be lacking. Yeah. I think it's important what Morton is talking about here with a commercial as well. So one of the main differences between making a commercial for the product versus making a commercial for you is let's say you have a car in your reel. Then um, if you're trying to sell the car, you're going to make the, look, the car look, look as sexy as possible. The thing is, you don't really care about that when you're making a modeling reel or a texture mm-hmm. reel or whatnot. It's not sure it's got to look good and you've got to present it well, but it's more about objectively showing it. Yeah. If, if somebody's trying to sell like a Toyota, they aren't going to do a turntable off the Toyota in a neutral lighting because mm. uh, that, that just shows objective what it, what it is. You can show the sexiest angles and all the lighting. If you're if you're applying for modeling, just we can't see the model that way. Yeah. Like one, one, one example we were talking about, I, I, I couldn't actually find this reel and I have no idea who made it, so sorry. Um, it, was a, it was like a car show reel that maybe mm. came out a couple of years ago and it was awesome from a commercial point of view. Mm. Like it was awesome if it was a presentation for a commercial, but I literally could not see the car. Yeah. It was it was in, in shadow most of the time and then there was like these like lights going across it so I could like see the contour of the car. Like I had no idea what this car thing was about. Yeah. Uh, but it was a modeling reel. And that that's that's one of the instances where like awesome presentation from a commercial point of view, but yeah. terrible from a showreel point of view, for example. Like I, I I wouldn't advocate hiring that person no. just because I don't know the actual skills of the person. No, exactly. Like his his or her model might be perfectly fine. It might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. It, it probably is a good model. I just don't know. Also, the video gave me epilepsy. Yeah, a <laughs> little bit. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's an interesting one. And another thing we talked about there in terms of real and reels and epilepsy is <laughs> speaking of <laughs> is music. Mm. So I like it's. I don't know. Maybe it is a bit de- divisive. I don't know. Like I, I personally, I like music in show reels. Mm, me too. Just because, like, for me, it's like, oh, it's cool to see what what are the artists like and what music do they listen to and how do they think their reel fits with this kind of music. But I think people tend to go overboard a little bit. Yeah. And so when you let's say you're making your first show reel and it's a modeling reel. Oh, what a surprise! Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what a good example. <laughs> yeah. And you edit it to music. The problem is that maybe your what you're showing doesn't have enough time, or it's, yeah. it's, it's you give it too much time because you want to edit it specifically to when the beat drops or something. Yeah, that can be first of all, it can be very distracting. Obviously, I can just turn off the sound, but then without sound, maybe your reel doesn't work anymore. It just looks like an insane person's stuff where you have suddenly four shots in a second. Yeah, and it's like cut, cut, cut. Yeah, that's something that I would be careful with. I think you can definitely edit to the music if mm-hmm. you make it so that you prioritize your shots first yeah. or showing your models first, yeah. and then as a secondary thing, introduce music. I think this this is different. If you have a lot of shot based stuff, like if you want to show, then it becomes like, yes, it's both a commercial. This is if when once you have some shots and once you are working, working for a little bit, I think you want to show off some cool shots and you want to do it in an awesome way. Then I think you can move more towards the uh, commercial aspect of it and yeah. less. So it's not like 100 percent commercial for you. But I think in the beginning, when you literally only have turntables for models, yeah. then it might be better to just show the models. You need your reel needs to work without sound on. Uh, yeah, and like <laughs> when I'm reviewing reels, I I like to just just at home here. I, I like to watch them with sound just because it's less boring. Mm. Let's face it, it's not super exciting to watch turntables for like two minutes. So it's just nice with some like some like chill music on top. Yeah. Uh, but when I was doing it at Dinig, um, I didn't really have sound available. Like I actually. <laughs> I should have figured this stuff out, but I never, I was never able to actually get sound out of that bloody computer. Yeah, so, no, um, me neither. so whenever, 
I would just listen to them on my phone and stuff for, for music and stuff. So yeah. uh, whenever I was reviewing reels, it was by definition without sound. Cause then it, you listen to your own music yeah, while you're reviewing the exactly. reels. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, uh, also, like if you if you're sitting and reviewing reels all day, you might be like looking at fifty a day. Particularly if you're reviewing stuff for like uh, the DNA Greenlight and the internship schemes at Framestore mm. and all that, like you, there were like eight hundred applicants to that. You don't, you're not going to sit and watch like eight hundred bits of stuff with music on. It's just too much no. music. And that's where th- that goes back to the whole. Um, you might not finish your reel or look through your entire portfolio. Yeah. It's like obviously yes, you want to give each applicant the same amount of time and you want to give them the same amount of attention because everyone yeah. deserves that yes because they put in a lot of work so you want to give them the attention that they deserve and also in terms of in terms of music as well keep it tasteful yeah. like don't put on try to avoid your personal taste if you have a weird taste in music <laughs> like i uh, I, I'm putting up. I'm putting up some bonobo or something because nobody dislikes bonobo. It's oh, just we're, we're gonna have dislikes for <laughs> now. Yeah. Totally. So if you have like some crazy speed metal or like, <laughs> it's all recorded in a Finnish forest. Yeah, somewhere. exactly. All the all the metal bands get lost in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> like it's awesome music, but it's probably not appropriate for. No, real. exactly. So specific crazy dubstep, crazy techno, crazy metal. Uh, country, country music because country music country music might be I've never seen a reel with country music yeah, on thank god <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting if you can make an awesome reel with country music go for it but yeah. I, I I just prefer instrumental stuff mm. like just for it yeah well like I think one of the things that's nice about instrumental music especially for a reel is that there's no voices to be distracted yeah, by exactly it's just just the music and if it works well with your model, awesome. No black metal from Norway who screamed from the bottom of his lung. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> exactly. Like so, that. yeah, just just with, with everything, we're going to keep repeating this. Uh, we should just have a soundbite of us, us saying, keep it simple. Yeah. And just use that, because this entire thing here is really about keeping it simple. In terms of keeping it simple, I don't necessarily mean your work itself. Your work can be advanced and, and complex and all that. Because, I mean, if you're, if you're applying for a AAA game studio or film studio, it's got to have a certain level of complexity. Mm-hmm. It's just a presentation of it. Yeah. Just. Yeah, there was one thing you wrote down here. Don't waste time. Don't yes. be fancy, but it still has to look good. Yeah. As back to what Henning was talking about in terms of, let's say you're presenting a car, right? It's You don't want to do a commercial lighting setup where you have all these fancy HDRIs and lights everywhere around that just shows the model that's perfectly presented for this commercial. No, you want to... It's not that you have to have shitty lighting. Obviously, no. you can still do a nice light setup, you know. Like, that's why we made the flip normal lighting scene. Plug right there. Mad shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <laughs> it has to be, specifically for models, it has to be lighting that shows off everything you want it to show yeah. on your model. Maybe it's a maybe it's a character. Oh, I saw something really cool here. There's like this dude of um, some uh, Native American looking guy or something. Oh, but yeah, I don't know. Some, uh, can't find it. But it had this really cool overhead light, um, but there was still enough bounce light around so that I could see how mm. it was presented. Yeah, we just looked at that before. Uh, it disappeared in the in the masses <laughs> of things. Yeah, whatever. I wish I could show you an example now. <laughs> That's really bad. Yeah, this is also pretty cool. You know, it's it's got... Um, you know, I can totally see what this model is about. So... Like this, this here is this here is perfect in terms of presentation. You yeah. really don't have to make it fancy. You can see clearly all the shapes here. Yeah, yeah. It's nice and simple. You uh, also, I mean, the the model here is is great as well. So yeah, I think that that's pretty cool. Um, another thing that we quickly thought, obviously, we're trying to be as inclusive as possible here for for not just like three D character artists, but also yeah. people make people making a. Uh, concept art portfolio whatever it is a lot of these things also do apply yeah let's say specifically you're making concept art portfolio and it's you're focused on environments only it's it's trying to make it as easy for people as possible to just go through the things and see what you're presenting whereas like in a reel you would have final pieces in the reel and not worry about anything else. Mm. Then maybe in the description of things, you would put, put your breakdown in there. So you're yeah. like, okay, for this model, I did this, this, and this, so they can read through it. This becomes a lot more important as well once you start moving into shots. If you yeah. take shots from films, so you'll have a real breakdown in there. For, or from student work, it's student films as well. Yeah, exactly. But the same thing goes with, with concept art portfolios and art station. 
you know, just throw that into the description of, yeah. of the images there. Have like, okay, so in this piece, uh, broken down like this, or maybe the tools that you're working with, whatever, just so it's easy to see and follow your your you know, your workflow. Yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff here. There is a lot of cool stuff. ArtStation is, uh, is amazing. Mm. I, 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 I also just recommend keeping that as your, as your starting page. Yeah. Then you just get your daily dose of inspiration or uh, depression, depending on or how you see it. If depends you, on your mindset. Yeah, if you, get, uh, if you get encouraged by looking at people who are better than you. <laughs> yeah, then maybe ArtStation is not the place for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in terms of like, just like wasting time as well, it's not just wasting my time as a viewer, it's also wasting your time. Making a reel and portfolio takes a lot of time to do. Mm. So you you don't want to spend unnecessary time on it, like particularly in terms of fancy editing. Yeah. Ah, Ruffel Grissetti. What a beast. He's such a beast. <laughs> but this is also great presentation here as well. Yeah. Like this here is this is awesome. Yeah, sorry, we're just looking at cool art station stuff. Man. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just listening to this, this might be a bit boring. Oh, yeah. right, yeah, there's the whole listening part, right? You should probably also be watching this. <laughs> yeah. But, mm. So we actually just wanted to show off our original reels, uh, Hennings and my own, so for for what we applied with. Yeah, the, the reels which got us our first job in industry. Yes, exactly. And it's a, a few things that I'd like to point out for them. Actually, they, they look... Kind of similar. Hmm, yeah. that's uh, weird. Interesting. Um, <laughs> is, I mean, granted, this font is horrible, <laughs> but uh, whatever. Uh, oh, it's like my old website. And oh, everything. no. This is, it doesn't exist anymore. It's one thing that, so this whole preview thing, you know, whether you like it or not, that's up to you. But one thing I think is important is is the contact stuff. You have yes. your contact information for your reel right there. You can have that for ArtStation, for example. It's um, go to anything there. You could have your contact information right here. You know, it's super cool. They, she even has it in her description. So yeah. it's like she is literally, she, he is literally the easiest person in the world to contact, which is yeah. awesome. That was just a random example. So that, that I can't stress well. how important this is. Like we, we've been trying to contact people for flip normals as well for various purposes. Yeah. And it's really annoying when you can't find their email. Yeah. Like it's, I think it's so important that you are easy to contact. Yeah, for sure. It's ArtStation does make it easy. Like, oh, message, boom. Yeah. There's a business inquiry or whatever. Same as under the about section as well of it. Yeah, yeah. It's just really easy to. And like, so if you're presenting people. in a reel, just make sure maybe it's in your description. Let's see, is it in my description? No, yeah. it's there's something there at least. <laughs> and it's in baked into your reel. Here. Yeah, just so it's easy to definitely easy to find you. I don't necessarily think you have to include phone numbers. I see some people do that. I've never got a call about anything in any for no. any reason you can uh but that might also change yeah. my, my phone number changed when i did that because i moved to the uk so just some quick notes about like let's, let's look through this reel here is that my reel wasn't necessarily super focused on only modeling like no. for me it was a mix of some kind of concept artist stuff and then majority modeling and then some some texturing as well and it also wasn't necessarily focused around vfx no exactly mine was there was like stylized stuff mixed with realism because yeah. i didn't really know if i wanted to go into vfx or not or maybe something else i ended i started up a commercial so this mm. reel was perfect for me because i ended up both doing stylized things and i did um realistic looking things so just just look here at how the tr transition between the topology and like the close-ups here uh, or like uh, the general model like mm. you're not wasting any time here it like it could probably be a little faster looking at it now but it's also four years old yeah. but it's it, it's pretty much straight to the point right so yeah there's a little bit of an intro concept already thing to the to the model uh, the wireframe of the model not the best topology in the world but <laughs> i mean it worked you, you, you learn and you live and learn exactly so and then, like you know you have these close-ups which i you know i think is like threading the line of being too fancy yeah. maybe um but then you know just a little more face stuff because this is something i really like the character stuff mm. and then a quick well this wasn't a quick this took like three months to make <laughs> but uh like a scene from something yeah. which is cool to show off i think like if you have the time to make a scene of something you know, make a story or something with it. That's cool. And then in general, this reel was just like it was a mix of character and hard surface. Just to show that there was... I don't know why it faded. But just to show that that, that I possess both of, those, both of those skills. Obviously, mostly focused on modeling. Yeah, like looking at this reel here, it will be easy to hire you. Yeah. Like, that's one of the things. If you're 
looking at a showreel, then the purpose of it is can the main purpose is can you be hired? Yeah. So this is very similar to Morton as well. I had my website, my uh, sketchbook blog, and my email. Yeah. So I, I was trying to do a bit of both. I was trying to do um, just general modeling, but with a focus on characters. So mm. I, I researched a lot of this, and I got in touch with some modelers. And uh, I built a reel which is comprised of some texturing, some organic modeling, some photogrammetry, some hard surface modeling. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is the reel I used to get into Framestore and NPC. Yep. But also keep in mind that's four years ago. Stuff yeah, might have changed. Might have changed. Yeah, that's so so don't just don't just look at this and be like, I'm, we're going to make that. Mm-hmm. But stuff to, to keep in mind from this, which did work, was it, it, it was well presented. Like the stuff, I spent proper time on making sure wires were clean and you can look at that. I had depth of field. I wouldn't keep that on. <laughs> mm. um, because it, it, looks, it looks sexy, but it's not functional. Yeah. Uh, I made a car. Uh, I made this car because it was really difficult because it had interesting. Yeah, it's actually the front part shape. there is really tricky to do because you have curves going across it. Yeah. So uh, this was like to show that I can do some hard surface as well. A little character in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Sculpting. Yes. I also tried to do something here with this piece here, which wasn't. It, it was like a, a Valkyrie, a, Vi- a Viking Valkyrie. Uh, it, it wasn't just a beautiful, sexy chick. It was something which I tried yeah, yeah, to be yeah. a bit more original with it. Yeah. Instead of, like, it's more of a middle-aged woman. See a lot, actually. Exactly. And then this is from uh, the Bachelor from what we did. This is photogrammetry. And this here is purely a technical thing. It means I can show some photo scanning because yeah. I knew this was used a lot. Mm. Projected textures and just just showing the scan here and then just showing the cleaned-up version of it. Yeah. And... Um, because this is this was being used a lot, and knew that. Mm-hmm. This is also just taking a character through. This is this is a bit this is a, a bit of a weird one because it's very stylized in terms of shapes, but it's more realistic in terms of shading and textures. <laughs> yeah. But this piece here was the first thing which got killed for my next reel there. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's like at the end and it's long as well. Yeah, but I also would have I would have done this differently just because I would have liked to put the best stuff at the end. Uh, so I would have I would have killed oh not oh, best stuff at the beginning but then this one would probably could could put in the middle somewhere yeah yeah and put so best stuff in the beginning and then second best stuff at the end and then put yeah. the rest down in the middle oh uh, yeah but I mean this this one worked yeah. um so, clearly <laughs> yeah uh, so yeah I would really recommend that you you talk to professionals when you make your reel I think that's an important point like if you can get a hold of people in the position that you're applying for, that's super important. Because yeah. they have a lot of good insight. Obviously, they know exactly what you need to show in order to get a job. Yeah. Like, for, for the older stuff that I have, I still have on my website. I don't update my website anymore because no. I don't use it. But, and I, I wouldn't really recommend people to make their own websites anymore. No. Like, just seriously use ArtStation. And you don't even have to pay for it. You can just use the free stuff. That's also fine. Yeah. Um, if you pay, pay for it, that's like the pro membership. Yeah. It's like five dollars a month or something. It's it's, oh, okay, it's yeah. very it's very affordable. Yeah, so I think that's definitely a good thing because if you have, let's say you have something like a show reel, so it's in video format. So you, as you saw in my show reel, and yeah, the same with Henning, there was like some close ups here and there. Mm. But those close ups could really just be allocated to your put on your your art station. Yeah. So obviously you can't expect someone who's looking through your showreel to also go to your art station. No. So obviously whatever you want in the showreel has to be enough to get you hired. But if they're interested, then they'll definitely go check out your art station and say, okay, can I learn more about this person? See other yeah. other stuff that they've done. I think it's also important because uh, I, I, I look at a lot of stuff just on mobile and recruiters, they're, they're out on they're out on trains and traveling all old, old, old time. Mm. So actually looking at video isn't always the friendliest thing on mobile like no. maybe your internet isn't that good or it's just a small screen but on art station if you actually have pictures it's a lot easier to review that it loads quickly and it's it's very easy to navigate mm. that's one problem i see with you making your own website so when i was reviewing portfolios then people had two fancy websites i don't know what a contact info is everything is scattered everywhere because yeah. these people have no idea how to actually build websites and they're just making it fancy. There was one in particular I looked at which had this like crazy overlay thing. It almost looked like a watermark, but it wasn't a watermark. It was like, <laughs> it was this like crosshair thing just on top of it, just to mm. make it look fancy. If, if the person is applying for a texturing position, which I think the person was, then I, it's like you just disqualified because I can't look at your stuff. If, yeah. you, if you're looking at textures, 
you need specificity here. You need to know exactly what it looks like, but this was just a blurred stuff because of the website. And uh, that's tricky. Yeah. And find you accidentally. Mm. Uh, everyone knows how it works. Like if I want to find somebody's email, I just go to the about section, yeah. find their email, fill that in. Make sure you fill in your email. I can't stress it enough. Yeah. I'm sure there are people who's lost jobs just because, of, just because it's just too hard. Yeah. You want to make yourself as visible as possible. <laughs> yeah, you really do. Put in a little, di- put a little, put in a little description as well of yourself mm. there. Like, don't make it crazy long. Just a little bit about what you do. What do you, what do you specialize in? Yeah. Uh, why should they care? Mm. Uh, you can input your CV as well, which is which is nice. If you have one. If you have one. <laughs> if you don't have it, uh, just don't make stuff up. Or yeah, it's like the CV is good if it has relevance. Yes. Like. To be honest, whether if you're applying for a modeling position or a concept art position, whether you've been a truck driver isn't really very relevant. No. That's where, like, it's kind of, it's such a weird thing when applying for these kinds of jobs. Because first of all, yes, your work has to speak for itself. But then, okay, maybe you've never worked before, mm. but you have stuff in your portfolio or your showreel. In in that case, like, a, a cover letter can be super important as well. Because mm. we talked about that. We touched on that with um, Harriet from DNEC about... They actually read the cover letter. I I didn't know that. Like, I've never personally ever cared about my cover letter Mm. because it was like, oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, But it does. Mm. If I think it matters when it matters most in the beginning, because in the beginning, maybe your what you're displaying isn't isn't like a hundred percent yet. But they can see, okay, there's definitely promise in this. Yeah. So then they read your cover letter. And from your cover letter, they will be able to figure out, okay, mostly what kind of person is this? What is, what's their interests? Yeah. And from there, you know, they can call you in for an interview. For sure. I think it gets less and less relevant the more you work because yeah. then your work just speaks for itself. Yeah. And you just rely on your reputation essentially. As exactly. Well. Yeah. If you uh, need a cover letter, then, then maybe you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And one thing as well, just a quick, uh, quick tangent from here. Don't use Wix. Uh, oh, yeah. You can, a bunch of people are using Wix for their own personal websites because it's free and it's easier to set up and all that. But the sites just don't look very nice. I've seen some students who's like, why should I choose MPC over DNA? <laughs> you don't get to choose. <laughs> no, you don't have a choice here. It's not a buffet. It's not a menu. It's like, it, it, if it was a menu, it would be like, there's one item on the restaurant and 10 people want to eat that thing. Yeah. you got to convince the restaurant to let you eat the thing. <laughs> I think it's an interesting thing. Uh, a friend of mine, I know she's listening, so let's see how this goes. Um, she, she, so she, you know, she's wanting to make it into the industry, and she asked me if, you know, she was applying for a running runner position. So she's like, okay, but I have a holiday coming up in a week uh, that I'm going on with my family. Mm. So I, I think maybe, do you think I should delay applying for a runner's position in case they, you know, I ha- want to hire me straight away? And I go. You're not that important. <laughs> like honestly, yeah. it's, it's unfortunately. Unfortunately, the, period, the thing is, like, if you're applying to a studio, my main point here is that first of all, they have like 200 other applicants. Yeah. Um, and if you're all applying for the same position, and you all apply with some similar looking skill sets, yeah. then it's based on who comes first and what's their like, yeah. what's the chemistry and stuff. So. I think the, the main takeaway here is that you can't afford to be picky. No. I, I've seen that sometimes with people who apply for maybe an internship or junior position. And then, like, they're very cocky about it. Mm. And they're like, oh, I only want to work there. And I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, you just want a job. Yeah. You just need the job in the beginning just to get started, just to get some experience. Yeah. You really do. I mean, it's, it's particularly if you are going for AAA game studio or high end VFX. It, that's kind of like the end game. Yeah. If you don't get in into those right away, that's fine. Yeah. Like, if you don't get into Pixar straight out of school, mm. I mean, nobody does. Most people <laughs> get into these studios. They've been working for ages. Yeah. Or they've been lucky or, you know, whatever. Because at that point, uh, I, w- I was working at NBC and I couldn't show anything for two years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I literally couldn't show anything any of my professional work for two years yeah and then once i needed to needed my reel or once i once i could i didn't need a reel afterwards because yeah. then it was more your you have connections and all that yeah so i never actually made a professional reel <laughs> which i probably should because i have a lot of cool characters i want to show off it would be it would be cool at some point to like get it together a reel for mm. sure yeah exactly yeah then we, maybe we could get hired at flip normal <laughs> that'd be good we hire ourselves <laughs> as character <laughs> artists <laughs> that'd be fun 
I'm wondering, is there anything else we have missed so far? Because I feel we've been talking a lot about stuff now. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. That's yeah. Been <laughs> oh, there was, uh, I guess, one thing here is that there's, we did talk about the, the differences between, briefly touched about the differences between uh, VFX and gaming. Mm. And I think from talking to Gavin a lot, it's, the, what I my main takeaway from it is that first of all you use ArtStation, mm. but I, I, another thing I remember him talking about was that he didn't necessarily care about uh, turntables. Mm. It was like, um, it was just like the whole, uh, like I just want to see your character here from the front and maybe from the back. I don't need it to be spinning around like show all angles. Yeah. He just wanted something clear and concise where he could just see, okay, here's the wireframe, here's the wireframe. Yeah. Can you evaluate the model? Yeah, exactly. All of this essentially boils down to can you persuade somebody to give you a job? <laughs> is your is your stuff is your stuff easy to read? Does it look fine? Yeah. Don't be too fancy about it. Whatever it is you're doing, if it's if it's just art station or if it's um, or if it's a real, just keep it simple. Yeah, if I think we. Oh, sorry, sorry, no. um, we might have mentioned that, just, but like specifically for show reels, I prefer short show reels, mm. uh, one to two minute maybe. One to two minutes is probably a good length because you can get in, get your work in there. It's quick. It's easy. You don't bore the viewer. Like you have like a five ten minute showreel that just displays yeah. all the work you've done from since the beginning of time. Yeah. Uh, no one's gonna finish that reel. Yeah. And it's most likely it's just gonna be a waste of time. Because also you run into, you run you run into the issue there that maybe you've done a lot of similar things. So maybe your yeah. reel. After that much time, like if it's five or ten minutes or whatever, you might be presenting the same thing again and again, yeah. and and that's not really relevant. Like because we've already seen, okay, yeah, the person can do this thing. Yeah, this it thing. is like if you just did a Star Destroyer, you don't have to do another one, a different alternate version of it. No, no. Do something different. That was what I was trying to do in my reel. I tried to show some original design, some anatomy sculpting, some photogrammetry and hard surface modeling. Like actually mm. tick the boxes. Yeah. Because I could have easily just done like six creative characters and all that, mm. and that would have been fun to do. Yeah. But not necessarily very hireable just because you, you you just need to be able to show some range here yeah and I, if, if you are doing characters then you can you can still have like you just want to do characters but then show different kinds of characters yeah feminine ones or like a, some children you can just show some just crazy brute dude or you know just just have some range within your mm. within your field and I think it, one of the awesome things there is like what you talked about with your Valkyrie is like trying to do something that not everyone is doing yeah like obviously if you're applying for a uh, um, production artist position at uh, Wizards of the Coast then yeah do fantasy yeah right uh, if you're not then maybe don't do fantasy because yeah. everyone does fantasy but for for those kinds of concept art or production art uh, portfolios you know all that stuff would be on art station and the cool thing there is that you could totally have breakdowns of things mm. the same with with 3d reels you could use your art station for a breakdown where you show yeah. maybe some more behind the scenes stuff of whatever sure. you've created the nice thing about just keeping everything also on art station the cool i mean you can post your reel on the art station yeah. as well so you have your art station there this is your show reel and beneath that you just attach more images so those images can serve as your breakdown and then you can just direct everyone to the art station where you go here you can show you can see my reel whether it's a youtube or a vimeo video and then also a breakdown of a visual breakdown of things yeah it's interesting when it comes to arts when it comes to a reel then I do mind if the reel is too long because I can't really, I, I can skip forward, but that's annoying. Yeah. But when it comes to ArtStation, if you have just a bunch of images, I don't really mind because I, I just scroll through it yeah. and I can scroll through 10 images super quickly. Yeah. You don't control how much time I'm spending on that. I control <laughs> how much time I spend on that. So if you have a lot of cool breakdowns and all that, you know, that that's awesome. I think maybe we talked about this, but there's also like, so we talked about just maybe keeping everything on the same page so you can scroll down. Mm. There's like a gallery feature, which I'm, I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I feel like it's annoying. Yeah. Like, because you have to go back out again and then go into the new image. Yeah, exactly. So it's like you, every single, every single project would be one project art session. Uh, so okay, that, yeah, yeah. so that you, if you're doing a car, one project, upload all images, you're doing a character, mm. all that. And that, that can be fine as well. And that's that's how it's kind of done if you're just organically uploading it. Yeah. But uh, I, I per personally prefer if you have everything just on one page. Because yeah. then you can just scroll. Mm. Uh, it makes, makes it very easy just to, 
to evaluate your work all at the same time. Yeah. Just without wasting any time here. Make it as easy as possible for people, essentially. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering if there's anything else or if we have actually covered it now. I think uh, we've covered most things. Obviously, now we are talking mostly from a character point of view. Yeah, but But yeah. all this here should hopefully apply if you do whatever if you do doing rigging or animation or whatnot it all boils down to keep it simple yeah don't necessarily waste time and money on a custom web page no. or domain make an art station page put your email in there keep it simple mm. if you have to make a reel one to two minutes yeah. your best work first put your email in the reel yeah content info there and, uh, we should have like a TLDR. If you don't want to listen to us for 40 minutes, go to 42, <laughs> three minutes in the video, yeah. whatever. Um, no, I think that's very important. But also like one thing I want to mention is if you're doing animation, then you need a reel because you need yeah. to show movement. So that's, that's a, I don't so, know if that's so a, rigging as well. Yeah. I don't know if that's an obvious one or not, but definitely for anything that involves movement, obviously you want to, you want to show reel. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's like you have things like maybe you do effects for 3D. Okay, you need to be able to show the effects as well yeah. as you need to be able to show something there. There's so many different disciplines. And also within concept art or character art where it's painting, maybe you just have finished illustrations and that's where ArtStation really comes in handy. Yeah, whatever you do, don't put your illustrations in a showreel because <laughs> that is entirely pointless. Yeah, I think... Oh, oh, just a technical note for your showreels. Um, don't render with motion blur. Mm, yeah. Because <laughs> if you render with motion blur, it's it's hard f to pause the video and see exactly what's going on. Yeah. I don't I don't know. It's not something I've seen a lot, but just, just thought I'd put it out there. Yeah, it's like maybe if you do animation, maybe then. Yeah. Or yeah. lighting, but like if you're doing... If, particularly if you're doing characters, like... I had depth of field in one of mine, and mm. it looks super... I love the depth of field. <laughs> uh, it obscures stuff. Yeah. Don't put it there. Yeah, like, for sure. I think for animation, motion blur could definitely be it's part of it, for yeah. sure. But if you're displaying a model, you want to dis you want each frame to be as, like, still as possible. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I, I really hope this has been useful for <laughs> you. And, um, and that this here actually helps you to make an awesome showreel. Yeah, I hope it hasn't been too chaotic. <laughs> yeah, or uh, or too depressing. Or too depressing. In fact, that it's it's hard to get a job. We hope that you do you you be inspired to make the best showreel you possibly can. Uh, if if you have a good reel, then or portfolio, you'll most likely get a job. Mm. And the good thing about that is that's just labor. And another thing to note there is that so much of this is also timing. Mm, like yes. maybe it's not, even if you have the most badass reel and you don't get a job, it's not because you suck. No. Maybe it's just, it's a timing thing. Could be. Could totally be so. After my internship at Framestore, I didn't get hired afterwards because there was just no, there was no project. But yeah, regardless, it might not have anything to do with you. No. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers, guys.